Good morning. So carrying on with uh, Snippet Pixie next. Um, yesterday we were working on um, exporting snippets uh, to a file. And I think I hit a bit of a snag when trying to replicate the file format, the JSON file format um, that Snippet Pixie one is already using. It's a bit of a weird format. I don't know why I've done that. Um, so I think I was at the end of yesterday, I was scratching my head as to how to implement it and or whether I should. Um, so the problem is with JSON, it starts with a couple of bits of metadata and then we have all the, the, the types. Um, but the types are wrapped in an array, which doesn't make any sense. It should really be um, an object with types because you're never going to repeat, you know, you're not going to have like another object with another set of types of data. I'm not sure why I ended up with that format in Snippet Pixie 1. It may have just been a mistake with me learning how to do the JSON building in Vala. But, so I'm not sure what to do. And I, the problem I've got is that I will want to be able to import like a version 101 file into Snippet Pixie next whatever it is whether it's 1.6 or 1. or 2 or whatever um so i'm gonna have to replicate this format of having an array of objects and only have have one entry with all these data bits in it so but anyway um so i kind of got stuck um and ran out of time as usual so what we're going to do today well uh, what did we leave it at let's just have a quick look um we will i think what should happen is we should be able to make a test it should fail and give me yeah so we've got a generator version then we have the data and then it's in an object with snippets with the ID and so on, so on, so on. Um, and then the array of snippets finishes here. And then we have the data finishing and then the file finishing. Um, okay. Let's just try putting that array in and then at least then I know how to do it. And then I can decide whether I should do it. Yeah. Okay, so we need we effectively need an array of the data format. So that contains these. So it's going to be multiple versions of this object with snippets in it. So that means, well, it means that we need to have data. Let's make it of our far data is going to be a slice rather than an array, a slice of data format. So we could have um, snippet data 
is an instance of data format with snippets in it. See, this is why it's weird. It shouldn't be like that. And then the data is going to be data snippet data. Yeah, so we're going to append that snippet data to the array of data. And then add that data to the file. And then marshal it out. Okay, I think that will work. So we've, yeah, we've got an array of data, we're stuffing snippets into that data, one one entry, appending that to the array, and then appending, adding the array to the data. Yeah, okay, I think that'll work. Let's do a quick test. <clears throat> Generated version, data is an array with object, start with snippets, blah, blah, blah. So that ends the last snippet, the last entry in the snippets, then that entry data. Yeah, okay, so that works. It's quite hard to see that though. I guess that's one thing I should really do. So I've always output the file in an indented m method. It makes it a lot easier if you're gonna put this into Git or whatever, or you just want a diff, you wanna be able to see the changes and it's a lot easier when it's um, got new lines and so on. So maybe I should do that as well, just while I'm here. Uh, so the difference is, so that's it's very spacey, a lot of space between fields there. But there are no spaces here. Hmm. Okay. Let's, um, I know there's an indent. So what we can do, I can just do Marshall indent, no prefix, but we do want tabs for the indentation. I think that's the format, isn't it? Prefix and indent, yeah. All right, let's see what that gives us. It's a bit better. It's offset because of this bit here, but presumably it's starting with that. So yeah, we've got that. Okay, so the labels are butted up against the colon is fine. Then we've got the data has an array. Now that's just, no. that was correct there. Although that's got lots of space in it. And then it's a new line and then snippets array. So what's that? What have we got? Yeah. New line. Snippets of A. So it's a similar format, same format. A trailing comma. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So that does do the same thing. The only difference is that we don't have space before the colon, but I prefer that anyway. I'm not sure why the old version did do that. Um it is interesting that we have spaces on the indented version, but not on the compact version. I guess they're just making it easier to read. That's fine. Okay. Um, so the question is, should that always be the case? Should we always do indented as the output format? My gut says yes. Q 
keep it simple. Because it's the most useful. Certainly human readable. In comparison to that. does use up a little bit extra space though, you've got all these tabs and things. Maybe it should be optional, as soon as it's easy enough to do. Let's do that, let's do... Uh, indented... Ooh. Indented. True. Oh. No. Be all. As she said, it'll be false by default. I guess that's okay, because that means we'll be defaulting to the most efficient file format. But if you want to output something that is human readable, you would pass true. And when I actually do the f export file, I could just passing true each time. I've got to pass something. So, yeah. I mean, the alternative is I could have two functions, one for export and one for export indented. A bit like the Marshall um, and then you call whichever one you prefer. It's just complicated it for no reason. Let's do it. So, okay, so we'll do that and then we'll just wrap this. So we'll do if indented else return JSON. Marshall export data. And now we've got to fix up the test because I expect something now. So pass true for the moment. Let's clear that. So that still works, that's good. And if I switch that to false, run the test again, we'll get the output. Okay, that's great. Right. That's that's good. Okay, I'm gonna change a couple of things now then. So I think this bugs me. It's, it doesn't make any sense. I can't think why. Why did I do that? What was I thinking about extensibility? Or was it just a mistake? Why is it there? Why would we have multiple data sets, different labels? Just don't know. Okay, what I'm going to do, I think, Hmm. 
pop mids. Can't use it for the import if I change it back to not having the array. Can't easily unmarshal. I just had an idea. Okay. Right. So what about if what about if we so that we can do the import later and change what data is What we could probably do is pass just the header data, the generator and the version, because that's not changing. And then decide on which format to use, which will be versioned. So how about take this and we go Actually, no, I'll change that. I'll do it. Uh, no. Export. Header. Or meta. Header will do. Take that out. And then in here, we can embed. Export header. And then so in here, oh, I don't know how to do that now. What do we do with that? Um, how do you, how do you fill the data for an embedded field? Can you do an embedded field? Oh, my thinking of interfaces. Uh, okay, this is the learning exercise again. Let's see, I'm going to have a quick stab of it, and then I'm going to go check do um, uh, a look on the web <laughs> to see what the docs say because it's fun just to try and guess. So, right, we want those two fields to 
should be set. Um, so we'll do it up here because it's the first thing we want to do anyway. Um, let's do. header let's uh, export header take those stick them up there and then can I just embed header here Guess not. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. Okay, yeah, I have no idea. Let's go look. Uh, so, Golang Embed struct instruct structs instructs oh, there we go I've used this before Okay, so hold on a sec. Go ahead. By using embedded struct, the parent struct is embedded in the child struct. The limitation is that subtyping is not possible with this approach. You cannot pass the child struct to a function that expects base. The current post describes this approach. Okay. But using interfaces, subtyping is possible. But the limitation is that only that one has no way to refer to common properties. Okay. By using interface plus struct, it fixes the limitation of both of two approaches, but one of which is that overriding methods is not possible. Okay. But there is a workaround. Alright, All right, so this is the simple case. So we have a base struct which has a value property. We then have a child which embeds base but has its own style. All right, so you just, okay, so you create your base and then you use it prefixed with the type. Which I think is all I need. So, in this case, we are doing export header. Okay. What's going to be really interesting is to see whether the, um, the public properties here make their way to the JSON. 
because it depends on the public properties whereas you know I've got a lowercase here but that's because it's a type do I need to make this an exported type probably do but we'll see give it a go that worked okay I think I'll switch that back to uh, indented it's a lot easier to work with yeah so okay that still works that's good that's neat um okay so in that case that case we could have different versions which is really only for import But let's give it a quick test here before we move on with that. So data formats are still the same for the moment. It's this that's going to change, the export format, uh, the entire file, basically. So what we'll do is we'll have this Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to I'm going to take a copy of this. I'm going to just switch it out a bit. This could be useful if I want to do backwards compat. So let's do export 101 and change the version. I'll keep the generator the same. Uh, we're still doing the data thing here, but we are doing, yeah, so we're creating data there as an array and appending that to the export format 
101. But the actual export will be, let's change the version then. I think I'm going to change this to 201 because it's going to be quite a departure here. I think we're going to be doing version two. Um, so I don't need an array of data. This can just be called data now. There's no tray. That's that. Okay. So, yeah, export 101 and export. So, on the test, it should now be doing an export still, but it's doing this without the array and it's version 201. If I change up the test a bit, by just doing export 101, We get back to version 101 as the file format with this daft array in it. Okay. That's good, I think. Because we're going to be using this most of the time, but just for backwards compat, we could do this. Although. 101 doesn't use the full snippet. That'd be interesting to see whether it would cope with that. I could deal with that later. Um, not a biggie. Um, so. Let's put some stuff in here then. Why has that got a thingy on it? Name starts with the package name. Mm -hmm. Why is that a problem? Oh, of course. Yeah, because we're going to be using this as export. Dot. When you're outside of the package.
Hmm. Okay. Let's change that then. Let's change these to what about Jason. complain at all about that now. No. Okay. So we'll be using it as export.json and export.json101. That's probably better actually. Okay, it's fix these tests then um all right i think i want to test it with the indented format so Let's do a couple of things here. We're just going to pop out bits of data and make sure they exist. So we'll be formatting. All right, so that takes the slice of bytes and squirts it out as a string. And I want it to um, strings dot is it contains yeah string dot contains that uh, let's do what well, the ID yeah so the ID is on its own line and it has a base after the colon there then it's quoted and then it should end with a comma and that's it So that should, in theory, be an OK test. Pass. OK. So I'm going to want to do very similar now. Uh, but for different bits. So let's just take that. We'll take should have an abbreviation.
I'm missing a bit of a trick here, aren't I? Oh no, I've got multiple snippets. Yeah, and I want to test the first one. So, uh, yeah, so the abbreviation followed by that. And then the body. space there and the last thing is the formatted date So we have an ID, abbreviation, a body, and then last used, using the now, just up here, yeah. Um, the space after the colon has a decimal in Unix in 64 with a trailing comma that's not right is it no no trailing comma actually I'll tell you what we'll do is we'll leave that make sure it fails and then we'll take it out fail oh What's that? Abbreviation SP. Oh, back tick. Uh, okay. I've now deleted how I did that. Um, so yeah, so that is Oh yeah, there's a reason why I had the back tick and plus, okay. Plus that with a back tick. All right, so quote. Plus back tick quote get shot of that yes yeah, so we have an abbreviation in quotes then there should be a quote there then we actually have the abbreviation with its back tick in itself 
that finishes it off. Then we have the trailing back uh, quote and a comma. Okay, a little tricky because I'm using the back tick, um, but right, so should still fail, but should be on last used now. Yeah. Okay. And if I take out that trailing comma, fingers crossed, should pass. Good. Okay. All right, we're getting there. Um, okay, so that's JSON 101. So, uh, right. JSON 101. Now, let's say. Export formatted I want to say string, but it's not Our outputs. Let's do it, okay. Creates out put. It's hard to use words. It creates export. Formatted. Compatible with snippet pixie v one dot x. Okay. JSON creates an export formatted output. Done. And then in the test, we should be able to reuse the same data. Oh, let's um, ah, this is where <laughs> it's going to fail now uh, when I do this. So I'm going to do, we need to have generator all lowercase, which we haven't got at the moment. Um, and it should just be snippet pixie. And then it should have a version. Which is going to be in this case, one on one, but does it have a trailing comma? It does, yeah, okay. And we're actually expecting lowercase data 
with a ray. So we'll do that as well. It's not going to work because we haven't got lower ghost data yet. And it should have a trailing ray start on this version. And we are expecting snippets in the same format as well. But not got it at the moment. Okay. These are the kind of basic data structures we're expecting here. So this will fail miserably now. Yep, on the generator. So let's go fix that. So, generator. That is JSON. And the version is also JSON. Data. JSON. Same for the one on one version. JSON. And snippets. It's also been output for JSON as lowercase. Let's try that. Pass. Yay. Okay. All right, I've got like a couple of minutes and then I need to go. So let's quickly test the actual. Export that we want. Uh, we'll do it here. So we're going to call JSON now. It's all the same until we get to here, where we want 201 of the version and the data is an object. We still have snippets of A and everything else should be in there. Pass. Cool. Okay, that's good. So we've got two different formats now. I'm going to keep that. I was thinking that I wasn't going to support the legacy format there, but it could be handy. So the only thing, so these aren't exported. You can't use these outside of the package. But you can use these two um, functions, although it is an internal package at the moment. That's fine. Okay, let's commit that. As it's quite handy, it's working. And then we'll move on to doing the file stuff next time. So uh, what have we done? We have in the change that we have added uh, export functions. And Jason did export functions. Okay. It's 
snippets. Yeah. Okay. Right, and I'm out of time. So, um, thanks for watching, um, and until next time, take care.